Understanding Placenta Accreta An Introduction to the Importance of an Increasingly Common Complex Condition of Pregnancy and Delivery Placenta accreta is a condition where the placenta is found to be abnormally attached to the uterine wall at birth. In most cases, less than 30% of the placental surface is abnormally attached to the uterus. Overall, if the placenta can be fully detached manually without the need to surgically remove the accreta area, it should not be reported as accreta. On histological examination, the placental villi can be superficially attached directly to the myometrium without interposing decidua, also called placenta creta, PC, or adherent placenta. Or it can be found more deeply embedded inside the uterine wall, in which case they are described as placenta increta. Both depths of abnormal attachment can be found in the same specimen, and thus placenta accreta is described as a spectrum depending on the depth and extension of the accreta area, hence placenta accreta spectrum. At the beginning of the 21st century, placenta accreta spectrum affected around 1 in 1,000 pregnant patients, but the prevalence of the condition is rising due to the increase in caesarean sections in the last 20 years. In countries with high rates of caesarean sections, over 30% of deliveries, and high fertility rates, over 2.5 by births per women, the prevalence of placenta accreta spectrum can be estimated to be around 1 in 300 pregnant patients. Over 95% of patients with the placenta accreta at birth will present with an anterior low-lying placenta or placenta previa and a history of one or more caesarean sections. Thus, in most cases, the development of the gestational sac must have started in the scar area of the previous caesarean sections. The grade and lateral extension of accreta placentation, whether superficial or deep, probably depends on the amount of placental tissue developing inside a scar defect, or niche, and the thickness of residual myometrium. In cases of a large niche, the development of the lower segment in the third trimester is further stretched by the growth of the placenta and pressure from the fetal presentation. This leads to the progressive dehiscence or disruption of the anterior wall of the lower uterine segment, shown on these intraoperative images with asterisks. The wall can become so thin that the basal plate of part of the placenta becomes visible at delivery, but this does not always mean that this is placenta accreta. In case of true placenta accreta, the dehiscence is associated with an increased vascularity of the lower segment made of a dense tangled bed of vessels with multiple vessels running craniocordally and laterally. In these cases, it is highly likely that part of the placenta will be abnormally attached to the uterine wall, requiring a partial myometrium resection or a hysterectomy. The lower uterine segment contains fewer myofibers and more elastic connective tissue than the upper segment and is therefore more vulnerable to the development of caesarean scar defect. In normal human placentation on a normal uterus undamaged by surgical scar, specialised trophoblastic cells, called extravillous trophoblasts, migrate from the shell formed by the anchoring villi at the decidua villus interface down the lumens of the spiral arteries and the decidual stroma. By eight weeks of gestation, they reach the inner third of the myometrium or junctional zone where, unlike pathologic invasion of cancerous cells, they stop invading and fuse to form multinucleated trophoblast giant cells. Large and deep scar defects are often associated with absence of re epithelialization of the scar area and loss of most normal uterine anatomy, resulting in alteration of the mechanisms that control the trophoblast migration. This allows the extravillous trophoblasts to directly reach the radial and or arcuate arteries. The physiologic hormonally related vasodilation of the radial and arcuate arteries is accentuated by non-physiological trophoblast-induced remodelling and can explain the rapid increase in vascularity around the gestational sac from as early as six weeks of gestation. As pregnancy advances, there is normally a gradual increase in blood flow within the uterine and intervillous circulations. By contrast, 
In accreta placentation, excessive dilation of the deep uterine arterial circulation during the second and third trimesters leads to high velocity flow within the intervillous chamber of placenta from the beginning of the second trimester of pregnancy. This high pressure arterial inflow progressively deforms the architecture of affected cotyledons and leads to development of placental lacunae in the area of the placenta implanted into a scar defect. This also leads to the progressive accumulation of fibrinoid onto the basal plate. These changes are associated with distortion of the uteroplacental interface and the loss of parts of the physiological site of detachment of the placenta from the uterine wall. Deep villus attachment, or increta, inside the myometrium is not the consequence of abnormal villus invasiveness, but is probably secondary to implantation and development of anchoring villi through microscopic gaps in the myometrium scar tissue. My name is Gosha, and I experienced placenta accreta during my uh, third pregnancy. After a scan at my local hospital, I was told I have a partially ectopic pregnancy and I would need termination. I remember they put me in the room with all of the leaflets about termination. And I said, I don't want to terminate my baby. I want to continue that pregnancy. So they should tell me about the other options instead of uh, termination. I, I think it's the termination is the last option if we don't have anything to do. Uh, the pregnancy was uh, implanted just um, above the cervix and extending into the uh, C-section scar. And they sent me to uh, UCL for second opinion. UCL confirmed that uh, it's partially ectopic pregnancy, but there is a chance to reach third trimester. <laughs> but uh, it would be high risk pregnancy, uh, risk of placenta accreta or percreta, uh, heavy bleeding, which uh, can be life threatening, uh, risk of mid uh, tri uh, trimester uh, miscarriage, uh, infection, uh, life saving hysterectomy um, at the time of C section. I uh, I, of course, choose uh, this option over terminating my baby. At the point of delivery, I was confirmed as having placenta accreta, but I feel very lucky because I had a good outcome. I didn't have hysterectomy and I have my baby with me.